Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tour Before Shabbat TV. This is your host, Brother Jose. Well, I'm so happy to be here on Shabbat. And as always, we are here with Brother Kerry. Hello. So say, Hello. say Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So uh, Shabbat Shalom to Sister uh, Maria. Thanks for um, coming with us today. We're so happy that you're here with us. And today's going to be a great, a great teaching is when the day starts. That's something that uh, has always been controversial to many people. And we're going to clarify it. And of course, as always, Brother Kerry is going to present it. So I'm going to take myself away and Brother Kerry, take it away. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is a very controversial subject. And uh, I'll try not to ruffle any feathers here, but uh, it's important. You know, because if we're not doing it right, then, you know, uh, we'll, we will be held accountable. And so this is, this is what I want to share. Uh, it really was amazing to me. <clears throat> when I ran into this, found the father uh, tapped me on the back of the head and said, look up the uh, Babylonian calendar. And so when I did that, it changed everything. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, let me let me pray before we get started. Father, you who would come before you and we ask for your presence and ask for your grace and ask for your love, Father, towards us. And give us understanding and open up our hearts to uh, prepare our hearts, Father, for your truth. What I am about to share is uh, your scripture and is your word. And we just give you the praise for it, Father, and help us to see the truth in Yeshua's name. <clears throat> okay, the morning begins the day, this scriptural proof. <clears throat> Excuse me. The narrative that we all grew up with of when the day begins has been handed down through the centuries by entities and many governing sources through the use of man-made calendars. In this age, we use the Roman Gregorian calendar to tell us when a new day begins at midnight and the year begins in winter and the months are no longer lined up with constellations. We blindly follow these traditions, not even asking where they came from, because that is what we were born into. If you are a follower of scripture, then you can see that the Gregorian calendar doesn't fit the calendar given in the Bible. The problem is that we have been so far removed from this understanding of the true calendar our creator designed for us that we are kind of lost in this maze of all these other secular calendar systems. Don't worry, I will not drag you through all of that right now. All I want to focus on is when the day begins. But this understanding has been removed in part from our own scriptures by false religious leaders who are not concerned with the Heavenly Father's way. What does Yahuwah think of man-made systems, men dabbling in things that they should not dabble in? Yahuwah is perfect. In him there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He is perfect in all his ways. When Yahushua created the sun, moon, and stars, that formed the very basis of time for our planet. I have heard some say that with God, time does not exist. I find that very hard to believe when understanding that he is the one who created the heavens and all the heavenly luminaries that actually govern this beautiful planet in such a perfect way. All we have to do <clears throat> is open our hearts and look deeper into the glorious way of Yahuwah that existed before we did. And it existed way before the religious leaders who changed it and distorted it. Isaiah 55, 6-11 Seek Yahuwah while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wrong forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Yahuwah, who has compassion on him, and to our Elohim, for he pardons much. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Yahuwah. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts more than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from the heavens, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, and give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not uh, return to me empty, but shall do what I please, and shall certainly accomplish what I sent it for. My aha moment concerning this issue is when the Spirit of Yah told me to look up the Babylonian calendar. What I found was very disturbing. The Messianic Hebrew movement has a calendar that I had been following for decades, so I could keep the feast and determine when the day begins and how the moon marks the months. So when I saw this Babylonian calendar, my jaw dropped to the floor because then I clearly saw who we were truly following, the Babylonians. The Messianic calendar was identical to the Babylonian. Oops, what to do? Here's a picture of the Babylonian calendar. And on this Babylonian calendar, you can see over here is uh, the Hebrew calendar. On the right, Nisan, the names of the months of Nisan, Iyar, Sawan, Tammuz, Ab, Elul, Tishri, Marcheshwan, Kislu, Teb, 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 Tebeth, Shabbat, and Adar. And on the other side, they're very similar. It's the same, it's the same names of the months. Just spelt a little differently. And so this is very shocking. I mean, these names, some of these names are even in our Bible. And how did they get there? We'll talk about that a little bit. Brother, can you make that a little bit bigger? It's kind of blurry. It's kind of small. Your present, I think uh, there should be there should be a plus, or you can make the presentation bigger. Okay. It's like a, a make it a little bit bigger. Right here on board says present. No, 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 no. Oh. On, on your actual presentation on your bar, there should be a, a plus to make it bigger. Okay. Like it's uh you know hundred okay. percent you know when you look at the bar. Okay. It's kind of small right now. Yeah. See. Can you move it up? Let me see. Just go to the screen where the presentation is. Try to see if you can move it up and down. Is you like that? Like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't see it moving up and down. Okay. Really? Yeah. So it's been standing still. Yeah, it's been still. So give me a second. Let me just remove it and you go back on, okay? Right, let's try this. Wait. The, the, this will work better. There you go. Now, okay. All right. Now, okay. Now, on that same look, look on the top bar and see if there's like a plus sign to make it bigger. There should be like you uh, be able to break those letters bigger. Yeah. So you're doing it good. You're doing it now, now, yeah, you should be able to uh, make it a lot bigger. Well, let me try this. It just uh, one of the sisters was saying that it looked real blurry. Bad comment. Yeah. I'm trying to see how to do this. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. In the bar, so no worries. In the bar, when you look on the top, there, there's, there's ways where it's like hundred percent, fifty percent times. Well, I know, but if I did that, it, it would it would mess up all my pictures and everything. Okay, well, I guess just over now. Just leave. Uh, we're gonna have to leave it with that. We'll figure that out another day. But just continue. Just, oh, there we go. There you go. There you go. Does that look better? Uh, a little bit better. One more. One more. 
Okay, so where were we? There you go. Yep. All right. Awesome. All right. I'm going to get up. So let the wrong forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to you who, who has compassion on him and to our Elohim, for he pardons much. Our Father is so compassionate and so loving and understanding. You know, we've been doing this for doing this wrong for so long but you know he understands how we got here but he wants us to see his way now i realize that we have been lied to for a long time by religious leaders this is because when the tribe of judah was exiled into babylonian captivity in the fifth century bc they learned and assimilated into their culture when they returned to jerusalem they brought the errant calendar with them and refused the true calendar designed by Yah. And so the knowledge of when the day begins was also changed a long time ago. The idea of beginning the day in the evening came straight from Babylon, my friends. Do what I did, look it up. But Yahuwah never changes his mind. If we truly want to come out of Babylon as our Messiah instructs us, we will at least consider where we got messed up and be changed by the renewing of our minds. We have an opportunity now before it's too late to correct our understanding and observance of when the day begins. Let us begin in Genesis 1, where the statement of the evening and the morning has been misunderstood, misinterpreted, and misused to twist us away from Yah's truth. Well, I told you back here, it says, uh, look it up, look up uh, where it talks about the, uh, I'll, but I'll show that it's already gone. So I'll, I'll show that to you later. I'll pull it up later. Okay. We're going to start in Genesis one fifteen, and we're going to talk about this statement that, that has really kept us, uh, kind of locked in this understanding and the evening and the morning was the first day, but if we've got to, we've got to relook at this. Because we've been hearing this statement from uh, a false interpretation. So in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the earth came to be formless and empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let light come to be. And light came to be. Okay, so. What was happening here? This is the beginning of the day. Let light come to be, and light came to be. And Elohim saw the light, and that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning. The first day so if you notice verse 5 and Elohim called the light day that's number one and darkness he called night number two and so I'm going to be using this uh, throughout uh, this article uh, trying to uh, embed in your in our minds the order of things and there's plenty of uh, scripture that, that shows this. So, and here's the thing. So Elohim created the light, which is the daytime portion. And the darkness he called night. This is where he says, and there came to be evening and there came to be morning the first day. This is saying that. The daylight happened, and there came to be evening, and there came to be morning. So after the daylight, evening came, and it lasted till morning, the first day. And, you know, some, some people might uh, say, well, you know, but uh, the, the, 
sun, moon, and stars, this is the first day. The sun, moon, and stars weren't even created on this day. And so what was what was lighting the, the earth? Well, I've got a little side study here. Let me go all the way down. And pull this up. Okay, so let me address this portion in Genesis. Before the sun and the moon were created, what kind of light was illuminating the earth on days one, two, and three of the creation week? This verse in the book of John shows us that the Father and the Son were there from the beginning. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim. And all came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. King James Version says, uh, and the darkness comprehends it not. Uh, John eight twelve. Therefore Yahushua spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but will possess the light of life. Revelation 21, 9 through 12, and then 22, 24. And one of the seven messengers who held the seven bowls, filled with the seven last plagues, came to me and spoke with me, saying, Come, I, I shall show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, showed me that great city the set apart Jerusalem, descending out of the heaven from Elohim. And having the esteem of Elohim and her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and having a great and high wall, having 12 gates, and at the gates 12 messengers and names were written on them, which are those of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And I saw no dwelling place in it, for Yahuwah El Shaddai, is its dwelling place and the Lamb. And the city had no need of the sun, nor of the moon, to shine in it. For the esteem of Elohim lightened it, and the Lamb is its lamp. And the Gentiles of those who are saved shall walk in its light. So my point here is, before the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day, the spirit of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters above, I believe. So the earth was illuminated by the glory emanating from the Father and the Son. So that is how day and night could exist on days one, two, and three. And then came the sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day. Okay, let me go back. So here in Genesis... One, that's what is lighting. First thing was brought forth was the light. And who is the light? Who is the light? And Elohim said, let light come to be. And light came to be. Elohim saw the light that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. So. You know, the scripture usually always uh, <laughs> helps us understand these things. Okay, so let's go to uh, this other part in Genesis uh, 1, 14 through 19. And Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it came to be so. This was both physical light and spiritual light. And Elohim made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. The, so the first was created the sun. And the lesser light to rule the night. Second, the moon. And the stars. Third, the stars. So I will highlight... When it's talking about the day, I'll highlight it in yellow, and the night I will highlight in blue. 
And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And there came to be evening and there came to be morning, the fourth day. So in every day of this creation week, Yahuwah did his work first on the day on the daylight portion. And then there came to be evening and there came to be morning. So this word and is from the encyclopedic dictionary is important to understand. Uh, because let's just read it. And used to connect words of the same part of speech, clauses or sentences that are to be taken jointly, like bread and butter, similar, together with, along with, with as well, as in addition to, including also, to, besides, furthermore, moreover, plus, what's more. And the second definition, used to introduce an additional comment or interjection. I think this is the strongest one right here because that's what he's doing with and the evening and the morning and and there came to be evening and there came to be morning. So I think this is a uh, very helpful for us to understand what's going on in Genesis. The word and reveals that the evening and the morning period of the night came after Yahuwah created the light. So just to recap, the scriptures tell us plainly on the fourth day of the creation week, Yahuwah did his work first. Number one, he created the sun to rule the day. Number two, he created the moon to rule the night. Three, and the stars. So after he did his work in the daytime, there came to be evening and there came to be morning, 12 hours of day and 12 hours of the night. It has been there all this time, but my eyes were blinded by the false interpretations and misguided opinions of these texts in Genesis 1. Does everybody understand that? Everybody see that? Let's look into the book of Jubilees and Enoch to see what it says about the job of the sun on the fourth day of creation. Jubilees 2, 8 through 10. And on the fourth day, Yahuwah created, number one, the sun, and number two, the moon, and number three, the stars and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and the night and divide the light from the darkness. And you who appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts, for years and for Sabbaths of your years uh, and for Jubilees and for seasons of all seasons of the years, uh, and that's illustrated in the four intercalary days. Uh, those are the days that mark the seasons. And it divides the light from the darkness and for prosperity, that all things may prosper which shoot and grow on the earth. These kinds, these three kinds, he made on the fourth day, the sun, moon, and stars. So, if you compare Jubilees, uh, this Genesis account, with this account, Genesis 1.14, uh, you can see something's going on here. It's like something's been muted or muffled. And Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times for days. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. So it says the, the greater light to rule the day. It, does, it should have said the sun. Why didn't it say the sun? 
and the lesser light to rule the night. Why didn't it say the moon and the stars? It's like we're putting the stars, we're, we're putting the stars on the back back burner because they're not that important. Uh, this is, I mean, this is how I I feel when I read this. And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens and give a light on the earth. So, but right here in uh, Jubilees, in Jubilees, it, it really spits it out very plainly. And Yahuwah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jobs that it does and well here's another one and it divides the light from the darkness so nine jobs that it does and you know it only mentions a few things in genesis 1 14 account so now let's let's look at this in enoch because it really spells it out for us i mean in a big way the book of Enoch gives us a clear understanding of when the day begins. Maybe this is why the corrupted leaders removed the book of Jubilees and the book of Enoch and other informative books from the biblical canon, because these books hold the key of knowledge that help us understand the way of the ordinances or the revolutions of the luminaries. The first chapter in the book of Jubilees says this. This is the history of the division of the days of the Torah and of the testimony of the events of the years, of their year weeks, festivals of the covenant, of their Shabbats, of their Jubilees throughout all the years of the world, as Yahuwah spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai when he went up to receive the tablets of the Torah and of the commandment, according to the voice of Yahuwah, as he said to him, go up to the top of the mountain. Now let's look at Enoch. Okay, this part here was Jubilees, the very beginning of Jubilees. And now we're going into Enoch. 72. The book of the courses of the luminaries of heaven, how it is with each one of them as to their classes, their governments, and their times as to their names and origin, as to their months, which their leader, Uriel, a holy angel who was with me, showed to me. And their whole description, as it is he showed to me, and how it is with respect to all the years of the world and to eternity, till a new creation is made, which will continue to eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries the first law let me repeat that the light the sun has its rising in the portals of the heavens which are towards the east and is going down in the western portals of heaven and i saw six portals out of which the sun rises and six portals into which the sun descends the moon also rises and sets in these portals and the leaders of the stars and those led by them, six in the east and six in the west, and all, each after the other, a right. Also, many windows to the right and to the left of these portals. And first comes forth the great luminary called the sun, and his circuit is like the circuit of the heavens, and he is entirely filled with flame flaming and heating fire and the chariot on which he ascends are driven by the wind and the sun descending disappears from the heavens and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is led that he comes to that portal and shines on the face of the surface of heaven and thus he rises in the first month and the great portal I mean, listen to that, guys. How does the month start? How does the first day of the first month start? 
and thus he rises in the first month. I don't know how it could be any plainer or clearer. And he comes forth from the fourth of these six portals towards the east. And in that fourth portal, from which the sun rises in the first month, there are 12 window openings from which a flame proceeds when they are open in their time. Okay, this part right here, there are 12 window openings from which a flame proceeds when they are open in their time. They're talk, it's talking about the, the 12 constellations. And when the sun is shining through one of those constellations, it's marking that constellation. So there are 12 window openings from which a flame proceeds when the sun shines through them, when they are open in their time. And they're open one at a time as the sun goes through them. When the sun rises from the heavens, he comes out of that fourth portal 30 mornings. It doesn't say 30 evenings. You know, uh, the first thing that happens is that it comes out of, uh, of the fourth portal from the east. So, and descends directly to the fourth western portal of heaven. And in those days, the day is daily lengthened and the nights nightly shortened to the 30th morning. And in that day, the day is two parts longer than the night. And the, and the day is exactly 10 parts and the night, eight parts. Let's see. But I, I want you to see how many, I have all this highlight. I'm not going to read every little detail of this. But see, and the sun rises from the fourth portal and rises from it. And the sun returns to the east and goes into the sixth portal and rises and descends into the sixth portal. 31 mornings on the count of this sign. Let's go to 15. And the sun returns to the east and enters the sixth portal and rises from it and sets 30 mornings. Verse 17. And the sun goes forth from the sixth portal in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth portal. 30 mornings. I mean, could it be any clearer? And 19, and rises in the fourth portal on account of its sign, 31 mornings, and, and then descends into the west. It's like, and the evening and the morning, you know, and the <laughs> evening came and the morning came. Gosh. And on that day, the day is equal to the night and becomes equal. And the night is nine parts and the day nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal. See, sun rises, sun rises. I mean, it's all over that whole chapter. And this is the law and the course of the sun. That is the great eternal luminary, which is called the sun, to all eternity. And that which thus rises is the great luminary. And it is called on account of its appearance according to the commander of the master. And thus he rises and descends. It is not diminished and does not rest, but runs day and night in its chariot. And his light shines seven times stronger than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal, at least from our vantage point. Now, Enoch 73 says, And after this law of the sun, I saw another law dealing with the smaller light, which is named the moon. So for the sake of time, you can read the rest of the law of the moon for yourself in Enoch chapter 73. What is important here? is that the law of the sun was given first. Then the law of the moon was given second. And the sun is the great luminary. Why would the evening be counted as the start of the day when the sun is going down and is actually the start of the night? As the scripture tells us over and over again, the first, the sun, and second, the moon, and third, the stars. What would be, that would be out of order and out of their season according to what I've read so far. So now let's see what Jeremiah has to say. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, 35 through 37. Thus said Yahuwah, who gives the sun for light by day, number one, and the laws of the moon and the stars for light by night, number two and three. 
who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. If these laws vanish from me, declares Yahuwah, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus said Yahuwah, if the heavens above could be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I would also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, declares Yahuwah. And now let's look at Jeremiah 33, verse 20. Thus said Yahuwah, if you could break <clears throat> my covenant with the day, number one, and my covenant with the night, number two, so that there be not day and night in their season. What does that mean, night, day and night in their season? Well, <laughs> just like I've been showing you, number one and number two. The sun is number one, the moon is number two. So that there be not day and night in their season. Then my covenant would also be broken with David, my servant so that he shall not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priest, my attendants. Now, Jeremiah 33, okay, 30, 23 to 30, 26. And the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah, saying, Have you not observed what these people have spoken, saying, The two clans which Yahuwah has chosen have been rejected by him? So they have despised my people, no more to be a nation before them. Thus said Yahuwah, if my covenant is not with day and night, in that order, and if I have not appointed the laws of the heavens and earth, then I would also reject the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I should not take of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I shall turn back their captivity and have compassion on them. So in other words, these laws are not going to change. <clears throat> so let's see if there is any evidence in our scripture that can show us that the children of Israel began their day in the morning. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls, Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it from out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Okay, so here we have, you shall keep the lamb up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, some versions say between the evenings, but uh, most versions do not. It, this, that's why I use this version uh, on this particular chapter. Because it says, is, uh, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with the inward parts thereof. And ye shall let none of it remain until the morning. And that which remains of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahuwah's Passover. And so here we have 
<clears throat> day, evening, night, and morning. That's that's laid out exactly the same way as it's uh, was saying in Enoch. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to you who have throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Ordinance. Remember what we learned about an ordinance. Those are, those are uh, revolutions of the sun, moon, and stars. So let's recap what the day consisted of. So they were to keep the lamb until the 14th day, and then the evening of the 14th, they were to slaughter and eat the lamb and had then have, have nothing until morning. Leave nothing until morning. Because the next day was going to be, uh, you know, uh, the first day of unleavened bread. Exodus 16, 11 through 19. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, I have heard the grumblings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, Between the evenings you are to eat meat, and in the morning you are to be satisfied with bread. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. And it came to be that quails came up at evening and covered the camp. And in the morning, <clears throat> the dew lay all around the camp. And the layer of dew went up. <clears throat> and see on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. And the children of Israel saw, and they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, It is the bread which Yehu has given to you to eat. This is the word which Yehu has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. And Omer for each being, according to the number of beings, let every man take for those who are in his tent. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some, gathered, and, and so gathered, some more, some less. And they measured it by Omer's, and he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little, too little did not have too little. Each one gathered according to his need. And Moshe said, Let no one leave any of it until morning. And they did not listen to Moshe. So some of them left part of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moshe was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, each one according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. And it came to be on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, This is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is a rest, a Sabbath, set apart to Yahuwah. That which you bake, bake, and that which you cook, cook. And lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep it until morning. And they laid it up till morning, as Moshe commanded, and it did not stink, and no worm was in it. And Moshe said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahuwah. What? In the morning. It came to be morning. And Moshe said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahuwah. Today you do not find it in the field. Gather it six days, but the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there is none. And it came to be that some of the people went out on the seventh day, to gather, but they found none. And he has said to Moshe, <clears throat> How long shall you refuse to guard my commands and my laws? So, <laughs> see, because Yahuwah has given you the Sabbath, 
Therefore, he's giving you bread for two days on the sixth day. Bread for two days on the sixth day. And let each one stay in his place and do not let anyone go out of his house on the seventh day. Recap. So they were told to gather manna every morning. On the sixth day, they were instructed to gather twice as much. Yahuwah said, tomorrow is the Sabbath. Lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep until morning. Moshe said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahuwah. Today you do not find it in the field. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, how long shall you refuse to guard my commands and my laws? Father Yahuwah was showing the children of Israel exactly when the seventh day was, not just the seventh day only, but that day started in the morning. Anybody have any questions so far? Hmm. None that I can see right now, brother. Okay. Thank you. Here's one in Exodus 18, 12 through 15. Then Yithro, the father-in-law of Moshe, brought a burnt offering and other slaughterings unto Elohim. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with the father-in-law of Moshe before Elohim. And it came to be on the next day that Moshe sat to rightly rule the people. And the people stood before Moshe from morning till evening. Okay, so it says right here. It's important. You got to catch it. Don't let it just, you know, fly over your, the top of your head. We and have, it we, we, have huh? a question. we have a question, brother. Okay. When was the first day of the week? What day was it on? The first day of the week. <clears throat> the first day of the week was on uh, Sunday. Okay, continue. Okay. And it came to be on the next day that Moshe sat to rightly rule the people, and the people stood before Moshe from morning until evening. That's the next day, from morning till evening. That's really clear, I think. And when the father in law of Moshe saw all that he did for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for, my, for the people? Why do you sit by yourself and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? And Moshe said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to seek Elohim. And we should come to, to Yahuwah to seek him on this matter ourselves. This is very important for us to understand because it, it uh, I mean, it just, changes a lot of things for us and it's beautiful it's not <laughs> it's not a bad thing exodus 32 1 through 6 and when the people saw that moshe was so long in coming down from the mountain people gathered together to aaron and said to him arise make us mighty ones who go before us for this moshe the man who brought us up out of the land of mitzrayim we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took this from their hand and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a gold molded calf. And they said, This is your mighty one, O Israel that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Aaron saw and built an altar before it. And Aaron called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. And they rose early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. In this account, I admit that Aaron made a pagan festival and called it Yahuwah's. 
but we can still see that he referenced the morning as the beginning of the day. That's because this is what they were used to. I am sure <clears throat> they had been doing it for a long time. Just think of the Zadok calendar that was based on Enoch's calendar. Enoch being the seventh from Adam wrote down this calendar as he was being instructed by the angel Uriel. He passed it down to Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, and on through the patriarchs up to Moses and King David's reign. The Dead Sea Scrolls prove they used this more ancient and perfect calendar. In the book of Jubilees 12, 25 to 27, there is a story about Avram, who became Abraham later, studying Hebrew scrolls that his father Terah had. Wow, Avram had scrolls to read? Do you think they came from Enoch? If not Enoch, then who? This is why we are seeking scriptural evidence of the morning starting the day, because this is what they were doing. So let us check out some more scripture. Leviticus 6.20 This is the offering of Aaron and his sons, which they bring near to Yahuwah, beginning on the day when he is anointed, one-tenth of the ephah of fine flour as a daily grain offering, half of it in the morning and half of it at night. And I've color-coded that, of course, to make it easier to see. Numbers eleven thirty two, and all the people, and excuse me, and the people were up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and gathered the quail. He who has least gathered ten omers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. So the people were up all that day, all that night, and all the next day. Judges 19.9, and the man arose to go, he and his concubine and his servant. But his father-in-law, the young woman's father, said to him, See, the day is now drawing toward evening. Please spend the night. See, the day is coming to an end. Stay here and let your heart be glad. And you shall rise early tomorrow for your journey, and you shall go to your tent. But wait a minute, let's back up. <coughs> see, the day is drawing toward evening. And see, the day is coming to an end. I thought, everyone, you know, they always told us that uh, evening is when the day started. And here we have, in Judges, the day is coming to an end. Okay, so... And Shaul, it's 1 Samuel 19, 10 through 11. And Shaul sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to put him to death in the morning. And Michal, or Michael, David's wife, informed him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you are put to death. So here's a clear division between night and and the next day. So <clears throat> that's uh, at this point, that's uh, the evidence that I have. Now let's talk about it. Can you bring me back on? Or come on, come back on, uh, Jose? Are you there, Jose? I'm here, brother. Okay. Well, let's take this time to get a drink or something, and then let's come back and and, and you know open it up for questions or or whatever. Okay. Hey, Sterling. Hey, good morning. Let me see what else. Shabbat shalom. 
Good, one. good. I, I, I caught the end of that. I was actually dealing with a, a headache this morning, but I feel better now. So, oh that no, was, that was really good. I was fresh. I like uh, hearing your take on, on, on this subject. I've, uh, I've well, been at, I've been looking at this for a while. So, well, I'll go back and reread it for you. Oh, you will. <laughs> <laughs> I could just hit rewind. Yeah, yeah. I, I posted it on Facebook. Um, so that people can catch it uh, later too. So, uh -huh. awesome! That's great. So, uh, you know, yeah, like some of the stuff you were just covering in um, Enoch, I thought that was good. How it was brought to Uriel, and uh, or Uriel brought it to to. Um, um, See, that's that's an important. That's a really important part because Enoch got his calendar from Uriel, who was from Yahuwah. Right. And the, you know, of course, the Babylonian calendar uh, it came from Babylon. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, well, it makes a lot of sense. And I've, I've been saying for a long time and thinking that, you know, Enoch really was the first Bible. I mean, he was the scribe of heaven. He's seven from Adam and, you know what what were they reading they were reading enoch yeah i mean i mean, uh, jubilees proves that abram had had the scrolls he and that that hebrew at that time had not had had kind of fizzled away but luckily tara still had the scrolls right you know another thing i've i've heard talked about is that you know because enoch wasn't put in the canon they they didn't reject Enoch. They re, they just didn't want it in the canon. They didn't want they didn't want everybody reading it. So they they had some they saw value in the book of Enoch, but yes. they, they didn't want everyone reading it. So that so they didn't get rid of it because it's, well, it's been around, but it's they because, just didn't put it in the canon. It's so. because the nar the narrative of the calendar was different than what they wanted to do. That's why they hit the books, right? There's, there's, there, I think there's several reasons in there why they would hide that specific book, you know. But, mm -hmm. well, brother Jose, uh, what do you think about what was presented? Does it make Maybe. sense? Oh, it makes it makes, it makes sense. I, I've been always been saying this for the past uh, years uh, that it didn't make any sense to have a calendar where we would base uh, our Shabbat on the darkness. Because uh, I saw so many, so much scripture that says that Father's light, and it will make perfect sense for Father to present His day of rest on on the on the beginning of sunlight, because that's what He is. I know they had a. The problem is, is that we have to understand that the enemy's smart, and he knows before we were even created because he was around. He knows that twisting and twerping uh, Father's, you know, laws and, and ways of seeing things. It's the best way for him to deceive, you know? And yeah. that, that's something we have to constantly keep asking um, Father, you know, to get to get discernment because a lot of people um, need to understand that the word discernment means to awaken, you know? Uh, and we need to be, you know, that's why I love these topics because we're trying to awaken people to ask questions. You know, before we used to have that, that, that robotic mentality where, we, we, you know, it's everything what the pastor would say is what it was law or he was guided. But then now I believe that since we're so close to the gathering and the end times that we have to understand that we need to start asking questions to father and not man. You know, of course, you know, there are good men out there. I'm not going to say that there aren't, that there are, you know, there's, there's men that are spirit filled. But it's always good to have a, a, a relationship with your father to, you know, when it comes down to these situations, because. You know, for like you said, many years we were taught wrong, and now we're at the point to where there is there is no open, there is no there's no gray area to have to uh, practice things wrong, because right. then it's gonna it's gonna affect us, and like the scripture says, you know, his children will be forgotten because we're putting ourselves um, in man's hands when we should be putting ourselves in Father's hands. That's know? exactly the point. That's exactly the point. You we got to stop. Um, you know, I mean, Isaiah 55 says it plainly. He says, my ways 
are higher than all y'all's perspectives or anything. All y'all men there on, down on this planet, forget it. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So we have, to, he wants us to know that. He wants us to, to treat him as if he's got it all. And everybody else doesn't know anything. Seriously. And that's and if that's the only way you're going to find truth is by searching it out like that. I want to I want to bring this up while we're here, uh, sister. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna present some prayers today. Uh, sister says, if it's okay, I would like to ask for prayers for my sister Anna, who is going through uh, some health issues. Please, of course, sister. This is what we're here for. And uh, after the presentation, we also have a brother, uh, Scott Drew, who uh, who's been sick. And um, we, uh, he might have to get some testing. Um, you see, and uh, we, we need to pray because uh, he might he might end up with Lyme disease. So, you know, the, we are going to present prayers today, definitely. And uh, and I ask everyone that every day when you're praying, please pray for Anna, and please pray for Scott Drew, and anyone that is sick. You know, but we definitely are going to present a prayer today after this uh, the teaching. So. Um, yeah. Yes, sister. Yeah, we are. We're, we're all together, so we definitely are gonna uh, present prayer because it's really important. You know, uh, a lot of people are coming out with sicknesses and uh, you know serious sicknesses. Like, uh, present my mom too because my mom came out with uh, breast cancer and uh, the first stage. So we're also gonna present my mother and all those you know parents and elderly people and you know whatever it may be. You know that they can um, be also uh, presented in prayer, which is really important. And whoever you know, family member or child, you know, <clears throat> we, really, we really need to you know get this going and uh, you know not forget that everybody you know uh, needs prayer, just like we need prayer as well. Um, so yeah, we're definitely gonna. So if you want, brother Kerry, go grab your drink. Uh, you know, and I'll. Well, I'll uh, well I'm, I want to. Uh... I'll do that, uh, but I want to. Uh, do you see this right here, the Babylonian calendar? No. Uh, when I need, can you pull that in? Yep. Okay. 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 So, let me just read something really quick. Uh, this is the Babylon cal calendar after R.A. Parker and W.H. Duberstein, Babylonian Chronology, Providence, Rhode Island, 1956. Okay. Uh, look at this. Can you try to scroll up and down to see if it moves? Does it move? No. No. Okay. Uh, so do I need to hit present? Yes. yes. Okay. The same thing you do to move it up and down. Okay. No. Still see the same. Yeah, it's still stuck. Okay. Sorry. So how am I supposed to bring this in again? Well, I brought it in. If you want, uh, um, I don't know why. Try to refresh, refresh your presentation, and that might fix it. Okay. Is it is it a different screen on your computer? Yeah, it should be on a different screen. You might have to choose. See this. This is what I'm trying to show, but uh, you can't see me scrolling. That's, no. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't need to scroll it, but you can read it. You can see this. I okay, can read just, that text there, the highlighted text. Okay, so let me read it. Uh, the beginning of the month in the Babylonian calendar was determined by the direct observation by priest of the young crescent moon at sunset after the astronomical new moon. This custom is remembered in Judaism. Catching that? This custom is remembered in Judaism and Islam with the principle that the new calendar begins at sunset. 
in Islam, months whose commencement is of a religious significance like the month after the fast of Ramadan still depend on the actual observation of the crescent moon by the respected religious authority. If weather prevented the observation of the crescent, the Babylonians would begin the new month anyway after 30 days. It's exactly what the Messianics are doing. And the Jewish and Islamic calendars, each month is given a conventional length, alternating 30 days and 29 days for convenience. The table at the left applies that device for the Babylonian months which will enable us to construct a working model of the Babylonian calendar without the priests of Marduk. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Priests of Marduk were the authority on this calendar. So is that something we should be involved with? Absolutely not. And no. if, you know, they've got the crescent moon, they've got the sunset, they've got the axe, the astronomical new moon. I'm oh, sorry, you know. We, uh, we need to come out of Babylon. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, the more you look into truth, I mean, it's just backed up by evidence after evidence after evidence. I mean. Yeah, and it's 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 very similar to when I when I started uh, using the name of Yahua. Oh, I got all kinds of backlash for that. But I'm not afraid of truth. I don't care if if it's the truth. It's the truth, and you know I'll present it. And, and, no, and no one has the right to uh, be a thought control manager for me. But no one has the right to do that. We all have the right to study and to show ourselves approved. And then, brother, just try some. Uh, brother yes. Bolt here. Uh, brother Bolt here with us. Brother Bolt, say hello. You got you're muted, so I can't unmute you. You gotta unmute yourself. And uh, uh, brother Kerry, if you want to, uh, muted now. Yep. There yeah, you are. We can hear you now, brother. Go, go. Do what? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Happy to have you. Hey, the Messiah said if they hated him, they're going to hate us. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. You're right. Gary, if you, if you, if you, remove, if you remove your presentation, you can go back and we can probably pop it back up and it might function. Okay, let's stop screen. Yeah, take it off the screen. Like, remove it. There you go. Now go back on. Uh, bring it back on and see if you can move it around. Uh, I'll, I'll put you on the. That's all right. I'm I'm done with that, anyways. Okay. All right. Cool. Done with all that. Right. No problem. I have something to add with the quill. Okay. Sure, One thing I noticed about the quill is it was given to them because they're murmuring. Right. <clears throat> they're complaining because. And it's like, well, that's kind of interesting. I never saw it like that until Yahuwah showed it to me one day when I was reading it. Mm-hmm. Boy. Yeah, that's true. They were murmuring. So they got filled to the wheels until they got sick. <laughs> <laughs> also, Brother Kerry, uh, don't forget to put that, that teaching on the file with Brother Sterling, that on your email. Add that to your file, so in case of any brother or sister ask me for that, I mean, I, I'm able to give it to them. I know a couple okay. people asked me, but at that time we didn't have the file that Brother okay. Kerry set up. And that way, you know, you don't have to do it to them now, but, you know, in the uh, tomorrow or later on, if you yeah. put it on the phone and anyone that wants that teaching, which I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people going to ask. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's a great teaching. Are you going to... Jose, are you going to yeah. post this to where we can share it on Facebook or uh, YouTube? You can you can share it. You I shared share it, it on my Facebook. You can you yeah, can you can reshare share it, it. Uh, it's, it's, from there. It's, it's always recorded, so you can always go on YouTube and uh, go go on the channel and share it with whoever you want. It, it's yeah yeah you have that option. 
<clears throat> well, uh, I think I'll sing a song. All right, go for it. Break up your fallow ground, cultivate your heart, plant there the seed of life, Yah's word in heart. Wait for the ladder, bring the water of the streets, harvest the golden grain, the fruit of the word. Break up the fallow ground, plant there the seed of life. Wait for more the ladder, bring. Harvest the golden grain. Break up your fallow ground, cultivate your heart. Plant there the seed of life, God's word and heart. Wait for the ladder, bring the water of the spirit. Harvest the golden grain, the food of the word. Break up the fallow ground. Plant there the seed of life. Wait for the land of rain. Harvest the corn and grain. Break up the fallow ground. Plant there the seed of life. Wait for the land of rain. Harvest the golden grain. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, love it. I sure wish we could figure out how to get, you know, a good sounding, clear sounding song off my recordings and stuff. That would be really uh, sound pretty good, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, There's well, a way well, to do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. We will eventually get there. Let's let's do this prayer. Let's do this prayer. So we're gonna present Hannah, Maria Nelly's sister. We're gonna present Scott Drew and my mom and anyone uh, that uh needs prayer right now for help. Okay. So if you want to start, Father God, we present Father, uh all your sisters and brothers, Father. We, we specifically uh present uh Anna, Father. We, we, you know her condition, Father, you know that you are the healer of all, Father. We present her, we present, Father, um, that you heal her, Father, that you may do a miracle that the sister may testify, Father, on her behalf that you have done something, Father, for when man says they cannot do nothing, Father, you say that you can, Father, because you are the creator. Father, I ask you also to uh, look at uh, Scott Drew, Father, we know that he's a uh, He's been feeling ill lately, Father, and uh, you know why, Father. We ask that you uh, uh, heal him, Father, that you find all illness in his body, Father, and rebuke on all of them, Father, on every uh, sickness. Father, I ask you to look at my mom, Father. I ask you that you uh, protect her and guide her and heal her as well, Father, that when she goes to the operation table, Father, that is your hand that heals her, Father. I ask Amen. that everyone, Father, that is sick father whoever they may be of the family of the the family father that you have put a you know in our midst father that you heal them father that you give each and every one of us father health virtue father that you may bless our children our family father and uh and our elderly and uh, i ask you lord in the name of yeshua hamashiach father almighty in the name of uh, your almighty son uh, we ask for healing father Amen. 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 Sterling, you you look like you're not feeling good at all, buddy. <laughs> now, I got a little headache, but it's uh it's better than it was, so Oh that's good. That's yeah. awesome. So, well, as always you know, this is uh this is a family that you know we all uh, I love each and every one of you guys and then you know let's just keep you know uh giving out this material man because there's a lot of people out there that i'm pretty sure they don't have nowhere to go and uh you know the, the praise yah that you know brothers are coming and they're subscribing and they're sharing and you know it's really important that we do that because uh the more we share the more the more uh youtube will start 
recommending us to 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 people so i think that's pretty awesome um as i said you know the teaching thank you brother carrie because it was an amazing teaching i enjoyed it very much very much and i know i will use that to uh, be added to it you know as i see other things and yeah i'm pretty sure it's gonna grow I'm it's gonna happen. Happen. yeah it's, it's amazing yeah, it's, yeah. it's good to see it's good to see because you used to be on the other side of that argument and now you know yeah. it, it no one revealed it to you but the father so right that's amazing yeah it's uh there's been so much division between the day and the night and with some kind of teaching on what Gary just brought to the table there's been so many people that are looking for a good teaching and he he touched on a lot of great points and i think that um going forward it's going to start opening up a lot of people's eyes i pray that happens for sure I pray that happens because you know i'm not i'm the kind of guy that doesn't want to teach by my opinion i want to teach by what the word says and what the other books that should still be the word say you know that these things have been hidden from I always like taking a long time. Mm -hmm. I always like taking people to scripture, just as as Carrie's done. Yeah. Uh, well, if you think about it, let, let's let's think about when Israel was a nation, turned a nation in 1947, right? The very year that they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. Do you think Yahuwah wanted Israel to understand what they've been missing? Absolutely. This was a buried truth. It was totally buried. The Jews of the day had no idea. You know, they were following the ways of the rabbis and, you know, the Greeks and Babylonians and all this stuff. They had no idea. You know, I was reading about it when that was um, in 47, when they discovered those scrolls, uh, Jordan, the country of Jordan, ended up getting control of those until this, the 1963 war. Is that the year? I don't know if I'm right on the year, but on, in the 63 year war, um, the, the Israel uh, Antiquities Authority got control of the sc scrolls. So it was another significant date, you know, something happened and and it, and it was around them Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, oh, wow. that, that was key to bringing it to, to everybody around the world. I mean, yeah. right now, everybody has access to those things. I heard that in, early on uh, that some of the people who had been getting the scrolls were using them to light fires. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. I, I, I know it was going to the highest bidder. They were, they were, Jordan was trying to make money off of some of the scrolls. And so that's where the Catholic Church gets involved in because they got deep pockets, I guess. Well, I, I tell you what, uh, you have preserved enough truth so that we can see a, another, another way that uh, has been hidden from us. Right. And it's, it's just amazing. You know, it is. Uh, Father's, he's, uh, very good very good to us hallelujah yes he is thank you father yes i have something to add to that that just came to mind <laughs> with what's going on i i see this conflict with israel right now it's happening because it's it's awakening the remnant that's over there that um because this has been a war been between the darkness and the light for a long time and What's Yahuwah say about it? He say he's going to bring the darkness to the light. And he's in control of all things. And I mean, it's just fascinating to see Bible prophecy come to pass. Amen. Yeah, uh, maybe and, and at some time the darkness will comprehend the light. Yes, that, that's kind of how I'm starting to see it. Uh -huh. Through teachings like what you just brought forth, Kerry. Well, uh you know these teachings are important it's not because i did it it's because uh these these facts need to be gathered together so that people can understand uh you know that in the in the religious world we, we've got they put blinders on us so we can only see 
you know, straight ahead to what they want us to see, you know, but they don't, they don't want to take off the blinders because they want us controlled by them. But when we follow Yahuwah and his word only, first of all, it gets you in trouble with your uh, religious leaders, but it'll make you a friend of the father. It'll make you a huge friend of the father and he will bless you beyond comprehension if you follow him in his ways and he'll also protect you in the t in the time of tribulation hallelujah for that i'd second yeah. that yeah yeah he'll protect you so anyways um uh, bo you got any any other word you want to say well i mean we can all give our testimony as far as how we all were in darkness at one time. I mean, heck, I mean, just the testimony between me and you, Carrie, I mean, that right there shows us that we all come to understanding if we're truly seeking Yahuwah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, everybody has an opportunity to look into the truth and to ask the father, go to the father prayer. And ask mm -hmm. him what the truth is on this matter. Don't go to a rabbi. Don't go to a pastor. Don't go to any man-made priest of any kind. Go straight to your heavenly father. Because you already have a priest. His name is Yahushua. I second mm -hmm. that. And he said, mm -hmm. if his son asks his father for a piece of bread, would he give him a stone? No. No. Give him much more than a piece of bread. He would give him a banquet. So, well, in Scripture, it says the Holy Spirit's job is to guide us to all truth, not partial or some. Right. All truth. All truth. Yep. I used to believe that Jesus was his name. I used to believe that Sunday was the day. I used to believe that uh, the moon started the months. I used to believe that winter started the the year <laughs> in January. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I leave. It's like <laughs> the Gregorian calendar is really screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> really screwed up. Whoa! I hope I don't offend anybody on that. <laughs> you see, we're being led by Romans right now. So. We I think one day there will be a, a reckoning of coming back to the true calendar. Well, I, I pray that uh, people start blocking the truth. Mm -hmm. And not, not any man. Just follow the truth. Follow the man, Yahushua. I think it's happening all over the place. A place. People are, uh, like yourselves, are, are seeing the truth, seeing that you know, when the day starts seeing, you know, all these different things, the Zadok calendar, you know, not the Babylonian calendar. So it, it seems like to me in the last couple of years, there's been a revival of just a lot of different people, a lot of different groups coming to the same conclusions. And that's that to me is another confirmation that, you know, that I'm following the truth because other people are seeing the same thing independently. Mm -hmm. so, so it's another confirmation, you know, well, because I, I prayed and asked, Father, is this the right way? And, you know, don't let me be deceived, you know, right. show, you like show me your will. And, and he does. And then and he shows other people and I meet people like you guys and and uh, you're saying the same things. I mean, um, and I'm not trying to gather people to myself that, you know, are, you know, telling me what I want to hear. But I'm really searching for people that, you know, have, you know consciously you know uh, really studied this out and and uh like you you were had a hard stance carrie you were the opposite way and you come you you come to see this i mean you were warring against people that would say you know the day begins in the morning i was digging my heels in i did not want to right. uh, accept it at all Right. So someone like you, I mean, that's yeah. A, and then you who use people like so, Sterling to accidentally, you know, call me and uh, we connected. And I mean, it's just kind of neat to see how you hands all over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah, I, uh, after I, I figured out what the truth was, well, I didn't figure it out. The father just laid it on my heart. He, he, he led me and he showed me. And after that, I, I had to reconnect with people that I had previously not been connected with because of the conflict. Mm-hmm. Well, everything's for a purpose, you know. Mm-hmm. We're his work. So, Sterling, can I put you on the hot seat for a sec? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Sterling, <you're hot. laughs> so there's going to be a lot of people that are seeking truth and stuff, and there's not a lot of, like, we're, we're taught in the fall to gather together. And what you're trying to do, can you kind of, because I know people are going to come on here and rewatch it and stuff. Can you um, kind of tell them what you've been doing as far as your place and, and how, you know, Yahoo has been drawing people to your place for Sukkot? Um, well, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, so me and my wife, we bought a farm and we've had, you know, three other families come move on the farm with us. And we really just have a home group. And then we have a couple other families that are in the area local and we kind of just have Shabbat meetings between our homes. And, uh, uh, you know, the, one of the reasons I wanted this farm and I pictured it from the beginning is having a big, big Sukkot gathering, you know, on, on the land here. And so, uh, we, we've done that this year and then, or last year. And it was, you know, it's just amazing. And, uh, now that we're starting to, I guess, do do videos and kind of put ourselves out there a little more and we're really not doing that much but i mean all we are is just a couple of regular people just meeting you know in homes amongst ourselves and then you know we've reached out online to a few people and uh so people are hearing about us and they're wanting to come join us join the feast with us so um that's you know it in a nutshell i mean it's nothing special you know it's just you know this is uh I think it's it's the father. He's allowing, you know, the vision that I had, you know, to come to pass. So, so I got a question. So, if people wanted to get a hold of you to try to plan on coming for this Sukkot, how would they um, like contact you or whatever? Um, I, I have an email. It's uh, easy to remember. Finish line focus at Gmail. So you can, you can contact me on there. Um, but. Uh, that's and I have I'm on Facebook as well, uh, Sterling Ripion. Um, they can they can look on there, um, but that's I don't have any, anything else other than that. Just you can email me. You can check me out on Facebook, right. or you can talk to Carrie or uh, Jose or Bo. Yep. Definitely, uh, <laughs> thanks for letting me put you on the hot seat, Sterling. Yeah, thanks for doing that. <laughs> and, and one, of, one, of the, one of the great things I want to add um, of that we're, we're, he's he's also doing a Passover, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna put that on a on tour before Shabbat live as well. So those that won't be able to make it, they will be able to see it and enjoy it, and um, hopefully, um, like that. This is the uh, this is most important that we are a unity family. We are trying to bring as many people as we can together and, you know, get this knowledge that we have. So that's why I will be uh, I will be broadcasting it over there live as well. So I will be there uh, on uh, April 2nd. So me and my wife, we're going to be going there. So it's going to be I know we're going to have a great time. And uh, for those that probably never, ever in their life ever saw a real Passover, well, this is going to be the opportunity to see a real Passover. And uh, are you posting that on Facebook or how are you doing that, Jose? That's going to be posted in YouTube, and uh, and I'm going to try to get posted on Facebook as well. And uh, okay, any everyone, everyone can find me too on Jose Casillas. Uh, I have an album photo there, so they can find me on Facebook and they can befriend me and say, hey, you know, I know you have the channel, and I'll definitely I'll, I can connect them there too, and any information they need. And uh, so, yeah, just look for Jose Casillas and they'll find me. Or uh, they can always uh, send me in the community in YouTube. 
Uh, I told before Shabbat, send me a message and I'll get it. I'll definitely get it. And then I'll send everyone my emails. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, we're opening doors. You know, Father's, you know, giving us this uh, this great open doorway so that we can connect to whoever wants to connect. Um, so, yeah, in the future, I'm going to start connecting also uh, with YouTube. Uh, not YouTube, uh, Facebook. So we're going to start doing that on Facebook as well. We're going to start connecting it. So we're going to try to multi Trying to do as much as we can to get everybody connected to, you know, everybody has numbers and, and uh, exchange emails and all that. Because, you know, I, I really am, I really am uh, very, very strong in unity. Uh, Sterling knows that. Kerry knows that. Even even the other brothers that are uh, sometimes on with us, they know. I tell them, you know, we're, we're a unified family. And, you know, it's always best to, you know, like I said, you know, opinions, uh, opinions. Has been given to us for years and years and years, and now we no longer need opinion. We need facts. We need uh, scripture, and that's why I'm blessed to have you guys here, and I'm blessed to have Kerry. Uh, Father uses him, you know, to to uh, clarify and, and to have actual material. That material is, is actually at people's disposal, and the videos, like I said, you know, the videos are recorded, so. It's so easy. You can pause it, write down verses, pause it, write down, you know, and and it's just ask Father because all we're doing is presenting and doing our job, talking about the kingdom of heaven and uh, what Father wants because that's the great commission is to you know let everyone know that Father's kingdom is coming. We are in the end of the day, so you know Father does not know one to be left behind. So this is just our point, you know. But um, like I said, we know we're, I love I love the fact that we're not based on opinion. We're based on facts and uh, in scripture, and that's what actually gives you a oh look at him with a dog. My baby girl. So, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, I got my little I got my little uh, dogs running around, but I, they she's too noisy. She likes to bark a lot. So uh, this girl's very, girl's very patient. She waits for me <laughs> till I'm done. <laughs> she got a little impatient this time because so she wants she wants to go outside right now. You can tell. Ah, I get it. I get it. So if if anyone has anything else to add, feel free. And, you know, if, uh, if you want to say, you know, like I said, it's always a pleasure. You know, um, thank you, uh, brother Carrie. If you want to sing another song, if you or if you uh, if you you're good right now and you want to go enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, that's fine. Well. Um, I'll I'll sing one more song, okay. uh, and I think it's very appropriate for for this particular study. Actually, uh, okay. Babylon is fallen, has fallen, and Yahushua. Let me change the key. I don't like the key. It's hard for me to sing. See. Babylon is fallen, has fallen. Is calling us. This mystery religion stealing Yahoo's children. Let me get the words. It's been a long time since I sung this song, guys. <laughs> so bear with me. I'll get it right. Not a worry. It's Shabbat, so there's no rush. Yeah. Babylon is falling. I might have to be your backup singer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, just to let everyone know, my brother uh, Kerry gets ready. Um, his music is on SoundCloud, okay? So I just want everyone to know 
and uh, I'm gonna do a quick uh, a quick sh uh, share so everyone can see um, on uh, how how does it look, and uh, um, that way we can all know that uh, if we want to find his music, and uh, we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put a quick uh, a share so we can so. I'm gonna share, let me see, da, 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 share screen. Okay, let's go here. Yep, it's already there, good. All right, so, do, 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 do. Uh, string on, da, 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 window. I should be able to, that's weird. Let's see. We're taking it out again. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes, can I can see, see it. that. Okay. okay. That's where uh, Kerry's music and his albums are all on SoundCloud. He's got his new uh, Water on the Thirsty, Worship the Lamb. And obviously, this is all his. This is all his songs right here, all the songs right here, so everyone can get them. Uh, he's actually going to pretty soon me, him already talked about, I'm going to be putting a promo so he can be putting him, uh, I'll be putting a promo on the, on the channel for in a, in a link so we can all get his music. I, his music is amazing, and that way the brothers can. can uh, so just go on SoundCloud, look for Kerry Alexander, and just tap on him. And there's with Water and the Thirsty. All his albums are here. All his songs are here. And uh, you know, let's support the, the brother and his ministry. So and if you um, want any hard copies, so that's 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 where it's at right now. Oh. If you want any hard copies of, of my music, then we can yeah, we can talk about that later. Okay. Okay, yes, I'll, I'll try this song. Okay. Babylon is falling. That's fallen. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not even still on. Babylon has fallen. Has fallen. And Yeshua has fallen. This mystery religion is stealing your hopeless children. I can't even get the melody. In my head, what is going on? <laughs> wow! No worries, man. Babylon, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, and Yeshua is calling us to come out of the ways. This mystery religion. Is stealing Yahoo's children. That's why he's calling. Come out today. So don't drink from the wine of holy nation. The harlot is pouring. Don't look into the prizes, they're deadly disguises, mere counterfeits of the man. The church gives no rebuttal, because she is so subtle, so subtle she, she can lure the strongest man. Don't drink of the wine of fornication. The harlot is pouring for you. For every tongue and every nation has drunk it from the wine of a fruit. How do we find the harlot? 
who's dressed in robes of scarlet with pearls of gold who sits on seven hills just look all through your bible and there you see her eye opens yah's word reveals the cup of wrath she fills don't drink from the wine of fornication the harlot is pouring for you for every tongue and every nation has drunk it from the wine of a fool Babylon is fallen is fallen and Yahushua is calling us to come out from her ways so I finally got to that one but the message is true in that song I didn't want to be anyway. It says, come out of Babylon, my people. Okay, so are we closing this out now? Yes, sir, brother. So, like I said, you know, I, I thanks everyone for coming with us. Thank you, Brother Kerry, for your for the great teaching. Thank you, Brother Bold. Thank you, Sterling, for being with us. Uh, thank you, Sister Mary, Maria. You know, it's always a pleasure to have the brothers and sisters here on Shabbat, you know, and uh, we're always here to, you know, so without further ado, you know, everyone can just say their goodbyes and uh, I'll I'll end it with a, uh, with a blessing. May Yahuwah bless thee and keep thee. May Yahuwah make his face shine upon thee. May Yahuwah have mercy on thee, and may Yahuwah lift up his face upon thee and place peace in thee. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, y'all. Shalom, shalom, guys. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, everyone. I was glad when they said to me,